Hi there, I'm Alex Rowe with A Rowe Taxidermy in Tiffin, Indiana. And today, we're going to mount something a little different than a whitetail. We'll be mounting a bull elk straight from Colorado. So stick around. All right, I've fun. got the elk all thought out now. And the first step is to get a sharp knife and a good steel and start taping this elk out. One thing I like to do when I mount an animal of this caliber is take plenty of pictures beforehand before I skin anything out. That way, when I do my finishing touches, make him look just as alive when he came out of the woods. On this elk, just like I do my whitetail, I'm going to do the V cut right here behind the bases of the, the antlers and come straight down and uh, we'll have a Y incision and it should sew up really nice. Okay, keep in mind, just like my whitetail, when you get up here by the antler burrs, you want to really get all the way to it and release all the skin from under the burr. And do, we'll do the same thing right. on the other side. As you can tell, I've got around the antler burrs here. And I'm working now, getting closer to the eye. Come out to the ear on the muscle and release the ear from the muscle. Uh, but keep enough in there so when you uh, put the bond on filler in there, nothing's oozing out. So take plenty of pictures of this ear muscle because that really defines the mount. So I'll keep working on this, skin it out, and we'll catch back up then. One of the biggest things that you need to take care of when you have an animal like this in your hands and it first comes in your shop, whatever you're doing, make sure you get the proper measurements. Uh, the main measurement, there's a couple of them, is from the corner of the eye to the edge of the nose here, and that is right at 12 inches. And the other is back under the neck, about three to four inches back behind the jaw. Um, measure that around and order One your thing mannequin. One thing to make sure of on elk is that their tear ducts are much deeper than a whitetail. So when it comes to skinning out the tear duct, make sure you stay close to the skull. And that's what I like to do and just slowly take my time. That way I leave no hole in the tear duct. So. All right, I've got the cape completely off of the skull. And what I'm going to do now is wash the cape. Get any blood or anything that will keep the tanning solution from getting into the hide. And I'm going to get it all rinsed off and flesh it out. And then I'll remove the antlers and order the mannequin. When you do this, you want to make sure that you leave enough skull on there in case you need to take some off. If you take too much off, you obviously can't build it up. So cut at the appropriate angles, do your research, and keep hacking away. And make it all even as well. Now, once you've made your cuts and you've loosened any bone from the skull, what you need to do is cut as much as you can, and with a little jolt, you'll get the rack off there. There you go. You've got your antler off of the skull. Now this is ready to be mounted. And now it's time to get rid of The reason of I take the time to get all the flesh off now before I put it on the wheel is because if there's anything left on the hide when you tan the elk or whatever you have, the tanning solution will not permeate through the hide. The meat will stop it. So it won't lock the hair in and the hair will start pulling or falling out. So you want to take the precaution, take the time, get all the meat off the cape. All right, now that we've got the cape off the animal, what we're going to do now is take off as much meat as possible by hand off the cape. The reason I do this is because the tanning solution will not soak all the way into the hide. And if you leave meat on there, you run the risk of having hair pull out or hair slip. So I'm going to get as much off here as I can, then I'll put it on my wheel. Then I'll split out the nose, I'll split out the lips, as well as the ears. And then the elk is ready to be tanned. All right, we've got everything uh, skin out here and everything fleshed out. I got him rolled up. What we're going to do is we're going to put him in a bag, put him in the freezer uh, until the tanning solution comes in, and then we'll tan him. And about that time, the mannequin will come in and we'll get to going on him. So stay tuned. All right, now we're at the point where we want to tan the elk. And the three main things that I'll be using is the Crotan, salt, and sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. Crotan is what I typically use on every mount I do. You get a nice flexible tan and a nice hide so you can stretch and move it around when it comes to your mannequin. It is, to me, the best on the market right now. And that's your Crotan 2000. And the next in the mixture will be the salt 
and make sure you have plenty of ounces of salt for whatever critter you're going to be doing. And once we get done tanning the elk, we'll want to neutralize it and get all that acid out of it. So we'll use a soda bicarbonate, your baking soda, at that phase. So now I'm going to put the last of the water in the tub and we'll tan our elk. Okay, going by the sheet that is given when you order Crotan 2000, you're going to look at the animal or the next animal closest in size and decide how much will go in your mixture. For the elk, right here I'm going to put 7.5 gallons of water in the tub, 192 ounces of salt, and 24 ounces of crotan. Once it sets for three to four days, we we'll dump everything out, put six gallons of water back in it, and put 18 ounces of your sodium bicarbonate in your baking soda, which will neutralize the tan and neutralize the hide. Okay, now we're at the point where I'm going to put the last of the water in. Okay, there's our 7.5 uh, gallons of water. Next, make sure you put your gloves on during this stage because this stuff uh, is pretty strong and you don't want to get it on you because it will burn you. But we'll start out by putting the salt in. Now you want to put your salt in. When you're doing this, uh, put a couple in and I like to stir it up just a little bit. Just get everything mixing in there. Up a little bit, stir it up, make sure it you know starts to dissolve in there, and then get a pre-measured measuring cup, which this is a holds eight ounces, and for this elk, if you remember, we need 24 ounces of crotan. So what I'll do is I'll start opening this up. And like I said, be careful with this stuff; it is uh, very strong. Okay, we got our crotan in the bucket. When you're done with the Crotan, make sure you rinse everything out quite a bit. That way it doesn't get anywhere or get on you because, like I said before, it will burn you. So make sure everything's closed up tight. And uh, I'm going to mix this up a little bit. Make sure that you can feel the salt start to dissolve and uh, get, it, get it mixed really well. And once you have it mixed, what you want to do is take your hide and turn it inside out, this in the flesh side out. And uh, make sure you turn your ears, you got your lips turned, your eyes turned. You got as much meat off there as you can. We did the initial fleshing. We'll tan it for three to four days. And then we'll take it on the wheel and do the remainder of the fleshing. It'll be a lot easier. And uh, you'll get the hide real white and ready to go. So now I'm going to put the cape in the bucket and get it tanning. Make sure it don't splash up and get you at all. Just be real, uh, real gentle with it. Push your hide in there, stir it around a little bit. Get it turned around. And you'll know when it starts working because the flesh will start turning turn white. The hide will start turning white. Not the fur, but the inside. So get it stirred around. Every day, morning and evening, come in and even anymore. Stir it because all the salt and everything else may settle if you don't keep it stirred enough. So you want to expose every inch of the hide you can to the tanning material. So um, the hide's tanning now. Just ordered the mannequin. It's going to be a semi sneak right turn, so it should be here in about three to four days. Once this gets done, perfect timing. The mannequin will be in, and we'll be ready to mount.